So for this first episode, I'd like to talk about expectations with photography. You know, when I first started taking photographs about 15 years ago, I would set out with my camera and my tripod and my expectations were that I was gonna get an incredible shot because that's just what I, I expected, that that's what I thought I was capable of doing even though I was just learning. You think if you have the camera set up properly, you've got the tripod, uh, you know, back in the day I was shooting with film. So, uh, you know, I had the film that I wanted to use, black and white, uh, Ilford film. And you get there, you think you got this great scene, you take the shot, go back home. I developed this in my, in my dark room. And, you know, it's just kind of, uh, it's a decent shot maybe. The, com the composition was fine, the exposure was, was all accurate. But it's not that am amazing award-winning photograph that I had in mind. And that would just happen over and over again. And so after a little while, I started to rethink about, you know, why it is that we take photographs, why it is that I wanted to take photographs, you know, what did I want to get out of the photographs, what was really the impetus for um, shooting that scene in particular, uh, was I trying to capture a story or a moment or say something important, or was I just sort of expecting that the technical aspects of the, the, the photograph were going to somehow elevate it, elevate the subject matter to something that was higher uh, and essentially something that wasn't really there in the first place. So once I, I uh, rethought my approach there, that freed me up a little bit. It got me thinking that, you know, a photograph doesn't have to be something that's in National Geographic, doesn't have to be something that is uh, well liked on uh, online, on uh, Instagram or Flickr or wherever. It has to say something, though. It, the photograph has to, has to have some sort of meaning, at least to you, for sure. Um, but I think it still has to be meaningful to other people as well. Uh, you know, a lot of people will say, you know, you shoot for yourself and don't worry what other people think about your photographs. And I agree. I mean, that's, that's important, uh, of course, um, to kind of stay true to your own vision of the world and... and you know, what you think is important in terms of shots you take. Um, but it's also, you know, it, photography is a visual medium um, that you, ideally you want other people to see and to experience. And so if you just eliminate that whole aspect of it where you don't really care what people think, uh, I think that's actually extremely disingenuous uh, and just not realistic. So you have to sort of keep in mind what other people will think of your photos. Um, and that honestly makes you a better photographer. So while I don't think that you need people to like your photographs or love your photographs, uh, you definitely don't need them to click the little like button, uh, heart it or whatever to have it be meaningful or have value. Uh, I think in a lot of ways that's really damaging. That might lead people to take photographs that aren't really meaningful for them, but uh, instead, conversely, are meaningful for other people, other uh, people they don't know. You know, just because someone loves a certain type of photograph, maybe it's usually a cliched photograph, you know, that's not going to help you as a photographer. That's not going to make you um, a better photographer. That's not going to help you be more creative. You know, that's just going to cause you to cater more and more to what other people think. I think it's really important to think about expectations when you are planning to take photographs. Because without that, you know, you your uh, imagination, your kind of creative uh, um, desires get a little bit carried away. I think more often than not, it makes more sense to plan for a series of photographs. And let me explain why. Uh, you know, going back to that, uh, what I was saying earlier, just trying to get that one money shot, that one shot that uh, is gonna blow everybody away. Uh, you know, that just doesn't happen very often. Uh, and honestly, those types of shots take a lot more patience and planning. Uh, and a lot of uh, amateur photographers just don't have that uh, the time to devote to that. You know, for a nature photographer, it's going to be uh, camping out in the right spot and getting up it before sunrise, setting up your tripod and all your equipment, and then waiting for that, that perfect moment when the, the uh, sun breaks from the clouds or over the horizon, 
and lights up on uh, the mountain or whatever it is that you're capturing. So with that in mind, I think you'll find that it's really freeing actually to just tell yourself, I'm going to try to tell a story with maybe five or six photos of a scene or an event or a location, whatever it is that you have chosen as your subject. And I think you'll find that that frees you up a little bit because there isn't this expectation that a single image, a single photograph uh, needs to carry the weight uh, of the scene. Do you know what I mean? So, so basically, you know, if, if you have a several photos in a row um, on a wall, for example, not everyone has to be incredible. They do have to be well composed. You have to obviously utilize the elements of photography, the principles of photography in your shots. It's more using the strength of all of the individual photos together to tell a story.